Hey, how are you today? This is Josh Patrick, and you're at Cracking the Cashflow Code. And my guest today is Neil Livingstone. He is uh, with CFO Advisory out of Australia. And we are going to talk about hiring today, which is one of my very favorite topics to talk about because very few people actually do it well. So let's bring Neil on and we'll start the conversation. Hey, Neil, how are you today? I'm really good. How are you? I'm well, thanks. It's early in the morning where you are, isn't it? Yeah, it's eight o'clock in the morning here. Yeah. We're ahead of yeah. you. That's right. It's uh, I think it's Thursday here. That makes it Friday there. So there we are. Um, I'm in northern Vermont. And Neil is in Australia. And this is a wonderful thing with technology you have today. So you have you wrote something down, which I find a little bit um, I'm curious about. You said there are nine channels you should be in. T- um, so where to find good people? What do you mean by nine channels? Yeah, I find that um, when people are hiring, uh, they typically either, depending on what industry they're in, uh, they'll use a recruitment agent or uh, sometimes they'll also go to an online recruitment site. Uh, so they're, they're, they're two of the nine channels that um, I, I always recommend people use. Um, but a lot of people ignore the other seven channels. Um, and the rule of thumb that I follow is those most two popular channels typically are only about you know, half the opportunity. You know? So if you're using the other nine channels, you're doubling, you're doubling your reach. Uh, and, and nowadays that's super important. So what might some of those channels be? Yeah, so the channels, are, the other seven channels, um, obviously are social media, um, a, ref- a referral program and, and referral program there are three parts to that it's not just with uh, your your existing staff it's with your um, your customers and your your network uh, LinkedIn people uh, don't fully understand the power of LinkedIn it's very powerful now um, also your customer list uh, in your emails your own website um, PR public relations and podcasts, which is what we're doing right now. So all of those are channels that you can leverage from a recruitment point of view. And um, most of the people that I start working with are not doing it. So do you recommend using all nine channels at once or or using preferred channels first and going through the list of your preferred channels don't work? Yeah, it is a little bit um, horses for courses. Um, I start with the view that you should be using all nine, but depending on what your exact situation is, what the, what sort of people you're looking for and the industry you're in, sometimes not all nine are suitable, but certainly um, in nearly every case, you know, you're using a lot of them, certainly more than the, the first, you know, two that I talked about, which is just an online recruitment site and um, an agent. Well, let's talk about LinkedIn for a minute. Um, LinkedIn is probably great for white collar workers, but um, can it be effective for blue collar frontline workers also? People that work in the construction business or as delivery drivers? Yeah, fair point. You know, it, I, I wouldn't use LinkedIn for um, blue collar workers. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going to use a blue, I mean, most employers I know, and most people listening to this podcast are blue collar business owners. What would be the best channel for them? Because they're not likely to use a headhunter because, frankly, headhunters are kind of useless for frontline workers and they're too expensive also. So um, what channels would you recommend for a blue collar worker? Well, I'll just go through each of the nine and comment uh, very quickly. So you're right. Online uh, recruitment agents, not so much. Uh, Online recruitment sites, absolutely. Um, a common mistake that people make uh, with online recruitment sites is they only use one. Um, now, every market's different. I can talk to you, for example, about the Sydney market. Um, there are seven or eight different options that people can use, and I always recommend using at least two um, and testing testing others. Um, social media, uh, depending on how big your reach is, um, is would, would work for blue collar workers as well. Um, Referral programs would be fantastic, I think, for um, blue collar workers if you get them right, particularly um, using your your own staff. 
Um, LinkedIn, as we said, not so much. Your email list out to customers, absolutely. You, you, that would be an effective uh, channel to, to reach out to. Your own website, absolutely as well. Uh, people massively underutilize um, websites. So the biggest thing that I always recommend people do in the, on their own website is obviously have a, a join us page, but on that page, um, you need to shoot a video of your current employees talking about why they like working for you. Um, That's a great idea. Well, That's a really yeah. good idea. Yeah. And then once you have that video, I'm a big fan of video in all things, but recruitment video is very, very powerful. And once you have that video, not only can you put it on your website, you can use it in your social media. Um, you can use it out in your emails. There are, there are many, many ways that you can repurpose that, that, that video. And the video just needs to be authentic. You know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, you're paying thousands of dollars uh, to get some uh, a videographer to really make it look pretty. In fact, nowadays uh, that, that can work against you. You know, so long as the lighting is decent and the audio is decent, the authenticity of the content is what's important now. Uh, and then the last two channels, PR, um, that can work in the blue collar space as well. Uh, again, that's a little bit horses for courses. Now with PR, um, people understand what the importance of PR is in terms of getting out to their audience and their customers, but that's a golden opportunity to obviously talk about the fact that you're growing or you're wanting to grow and you're looking for people. So you can kill two birds in one stone there. Um, and, and with podcasts, uh, yes, I absolutely think that's a, a channel for blue collar workers as well. Cool. Cool. So um, what should you ask people in interviews? I have my ideas what you should ask, but what do you think? And we'll see if we, if we're in the same range. I just did a, Funny you ask that because I just literally uh, recorded a video on this last night. So um, the the foundation of all success in business is uh, action, right? So when I'm when I'm looking for someone, I'm looking for two two key traits, um, and uh, they are are they an action orientated person, um, and uh, are they social? I, you know, will, will, they, will they fit into my team? And notice I haven't including in their technical skills. Now, technical skills are very important, but I find that interviews are dominated far too much by um, technical type questions. Technical type questions are obviously very important. People need to do the job, um, but um, if they're not action orientated, if they're not proactive, um, they're not going to help you drive the success that you want in your business. So for me, someone that um, has action orientation in their psyche, you can teach them uh, the technical skills if they don't have, you know, exactly what you're looking for. So back to your question, um, the questions that I that I ask are um, very much around what makes them tick. Um, and there are nine, there, there are nine areas that generally make people tick. And, and that's what I focus more than half the interview on. And once I understand what makes them tick, uh, and I and and I've got to the bottom of whether they're an action orientated person. Um, all of the language then becomes around what makes them tick. I'll give you an example. When I started my career, I worked for I started working for Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, and uh, I'd just come out of high school. And the most important thing to to me was not how much money I was earning. It was the fact that they were going to train me um, and uh, skill me up to the point where I could go and work overseas. So I really wanted to go and work in Europe, which I did for five years. So um, that PwC tailored all of all of um, the language, both at the interview process and when I joined um, uh, around what made me tick. And so there was an alignment there. And that's what you want to get at the end of the day, you want to have an alignment between the employer and the employee. And you can only do that if the employer understands what makes the employee tick. The employer needs to do something first, which is they need to know what their values are and they need to know what the definition of their values are before they can do that. <laughs> At least that's been yep. my experience. And, you know, the way we do hiring is that number one on the list is 
A, you have to be a values-led organization. You want to have great people. Otherwise, people have no idea what you're about. And B, when you interview for somebody in that, and you're asking those values-oriented questions, you can't say, hey, are you personally responsible? You need to have a good question that's open-ended where they're going to tell you a story where you might say, well, tell me is, tell me about a time where you were having problems with somebody or you had a problem with your boss and what happened. And then they'll tell you a story. And when they tell that story, you can sort of flesh out where they are on that, that scale of personal responsibility. Or, you know, let's say you say curiosity. You say, you know, um, when was the last time you learned something and what was it and, how, and why did you decide to learn that? You know, again, you're going to get whether they're curious and how if they look at you with a blank look, you know, they're probably not very curious. If they can tell you a really detailed story about that, there's a pretty good chance they are curious. So it's learning yeah. that skill, which is not something that we're really taught as managers. We like to talk about ourselves and not ask good questions, be a good listener. So where does yeah. becoming a great listener come in in hiring the right person? Yeah, I mean, that's very linked to what I'm saying. So if you you have to be a good listener to, to get to the bottom of what makes someone tick. Okay. So, um, and this is the other related point it, that, um, good people, cause at the end of the day, you're wanting to recruit good people. Um, good people want to work for good people. So it's all, it's all about leadership. You can have uh, all of the recruitment strategies in the world that are humming along, but you know, if you don't have a good business and you're not a good leader, the good people are going to pick up on that uh, and they're going to take take other options. So uh, being part of a good leader is understanding what people makes people tick. And like you said, um, having having values. Um, so if you listen, you, you will you will invariably ask the right questions. And, you know, when you you know, when you're asking the right questions, when they go, they say things like that's a good question or um, they you can see them light up. Uh, their energy goes up and they actually give you quite a long answer that you've really hit their hot hot button at that point. Uh, and, and, and what also I'm looking for is someone that is passionate about uh, what makes them tick. You know, it, it could be money or it could be other things. It could be enhancing their CV. There, there, are, there are eight or nine things. Uh, but if I don't find that in an interview and I don't believe that they're passionate about that, then I can't motivate them uh, and align and align them uh, along a journey where we both benefit. You know, um, like you said, if, if someone's not curious, typically that means that they don't have a, a high degree. What really makes them tick is not motivating them enough. Because if if they can't get motivated by what makes them tick, there's no way you're going to be able to motivate them to to help you do what you want to do as well. No question. One of my, my little mantra or one of my little trick questions I used to ask people is, how do you motivate people? And I get all these answers and I would say, well, I hate to tell you guys all you're all wrong. You can't motivate people. You can demotivate people. You can sure. set up situations for people to be motivated in. But motivation is an internally intrinsic activity. Yeah. And that's a really important thing for business owners to learn. Yeah, I, I always say it's so true. I always say that people people's favorite radio station is W I I F M, uh, which is, stands for "What's in it for me." Yeah, uh, and and you're right. It's an internally driven thing, and you've got to know what it is and be able to tap into it. So if it's not strong, you're never get like you said. You're never going to be able to motivate people. Uh, but if it is strong, and you can align your interest to their interests, and then you can give them the outcome that they desire they will be able to help you give the outcome that you desire. So well, this is something that's really important for people in the States today. This next question I want or area I want to talk about is when to recruit, because we're in a, a labor shortage in the United States. I don't know about Australia, but I assume the same is in Australia. So yeah. if I'm going to be um, keeping a full staff, when should I be recruiting? Short answer is you should always be recruiting, you know, and um, that would be my answer too. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, and particularly what you've got to do or what I, um, when I sit down with people, I say, what, what are the roles that are critical to success of your business? You know, and typically they will be um, your sales and marketing people, your, your, your leadership type roles. Uh, and, you know, if you're wanting to bring on customers, the staff that you need to support that. Uh, and you, you, need, you need to be recruiting for those people all the time. And that's what I help people do. You, you need to set up systems so that the permanent state of recruitment is not uh, you know, manually intensive. And that's why those nine channels that I talked about before are so important using video and, and, and other things like that, because you can set it up where that permanent state of recruitment, uh, it, it just takes care of itself. And if you don't happen to have jobs open at that time, you can always say, gee, I'd like to keep your, your name on file. We don't have anything right now. But if we do, I'd like to give you a call, which is always a very positive thing to do. Yeah, I, I, I always say um, good people pay for themselves very quickly. Um, so when I find a good person or if I have a client that finds a good person, I'm always, I'm always encouraging them to just take them on. Because what it also helps you do is if you have um, some non-performing people, you can switch them out. So it, it just gives the, the business owner options. So if you've got a, a constant stream of people coming to you wanting to work for you, hopefully there'll be uh, 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 good people in there. And and uh, you can either do what you said, which is, you know, we'll take your number, but a better option in many cases is take them on um, and that is increasing the average quality of your team. Um, and that's motivating and uh, uh, it brings out the best in other people in your team. And if it doesn't, you can always um, you know, clear, clear out the, everyone in, every business owner has a few people in their business that they know they probably are not performing and would love to manage, manage that situation, but they feel they can't. So if you've got a steady stream of good people coming in, that opens that up. So, Neil, we have uh, just time for one more topic, and I'd like to talk a little bit about how do we get people's attention and stand out? Because that's, you know, too often every business kind of sounds the same as every other business. And if my business is unique and we have a great workforce and a great, you know, uh, we're a great place to, how do we stand out? Such a good question. I'm going to answer that as quickly as I can. Um, the first thing is the message that you're going out there is got to be focused on them. You know, what outcomes can you give people? And that goes back to understanding those eight or nine, I call them hot buttons. You know, everyone has different hot buttons, usually the two or three out of those eight or nine. And you will typically know what they are from your current employees. Uh, it's amazing when you do a video of your existing employees and they're saying why we love working for you they'll talk about their hot buttons and it's very uh, it's amazing how often they talk about the same things so once you know what they are that's what you you go out with and then the second part of that um, you use video uh, to bring it to life uh, in a story and you and then you do what i call an omni 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 channel approach which is you select uh, you know, as many of those nine channels that I walked walk through before and you hit those channels uh, at the same time uh, and then you will get your message out there. Nowadays, people need to see messages more than once. Uh, so in fact, some, sometimes many times. Uh, and then you will go to the top of the queue as, uh, so people will find you, but you'll also be at the top of the queue of, of people, of organizations that interest people. And then the oh. final point, sorry. If sure, you've go got ahead. Good go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Be a good leader. Yeah, once once you get in front of them, you've got to be a good leader and move fast and be decisive because the interview process is all they can see of you at that point. Uh, so you've got to nail that as well. Yeah, you're in a competitive um, realm to get good employees or get good team members now. And I actually like the term team members way better than employees because a team member is somebody who's going to work with you. An employee is somebody who works for you. And that's, mm -hmm. in my mind, a hugely big distinction. And there's one more thing, which I think is really important. This is more around retention than it is around recruitment, which is friendship. Companies that encourage friendship 
will have way better retention than companies that discourage friendship. And more companies I know discourage coworkers being friends than encourage them because they think that's a risk for some reason. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? I couldn't agree more. I mean, we're social beasts at the end of the day. You know, we, we want we want connection. Um, so and and you know, you're at the workplace a lot of your life. Uh, so it's got to be somewhere where you want to be. Uh, and friendship is a, a big, so important to human beings. Um, so, you know, the culture that you have and, and, and the leadership you bring uh, will, will uh, you know, let friendships and connections flourish in your business, or it should. Oh, so Neil, we're going to have to leave it here because we are out of time. So if somebody wanted to find you and wanted some help with hiring, how would they go about doing that? I think the easiest way is to just uh, uh, find me on LinkedIn and send me a message, and then I can uh, send them a whole bunch of uh, free material that they can uh, look at, and if they like what they see, they can um, you know, uh, organize to uh, meet you know, over Zoom. Did they just use the word Neil Livingstone to find you on LinkedIn? That's right. That's what they do. Okay. Well, Neil's last name is spelled a little bit differently than you might think, so I'll spell it for you. It's L-I-V-I-N-G-S-T-O-N-E, -E, and Neil is N-E-I-L. So just look him up on LinkedIn and have a conversation. And I've got two things I'd like you to do. The first is I have asked you 395 times to do this, which is to go to wherever you're listening to this podcast and give us an honest rating review. If you love us, give us five stars. If you hate us, well, I hope you don't hate us, but if you do, you can give us less than five stars. And uh, I'll probably cry a little bit if you do that, but um, I might even get over it someday. And the other thing I'd like you to do is I have this program called the Financial Freedom Project, and there's two pieces to it. The first piece is you find out where you are on the success path to becoming financially free from your business. It's a great little program I have, and we look at four areas of your life. We look at your business. We look at your retirement plans, investment, real estate, and other investments. And you're going to find out more often than not that you are not on the a success path to financial freedom. So then we say, well, what now? And that's where we go to part two, is where you get a strategy or strategies that will help you move to financial freedom. Now, we guarantee that you're going to get that strategy, which means you have to talk to me first to see if I accept you into the program. And even the best news is I used to charge $5,000 for this process. And now I'm charging nine ninety seven because I found a way to take 80% of the time out of the process, and I'm passing all that savings on to you. It's a program that you really should take advantage of because it's going to give you information that you don't have right now, which is going to become crucially important as you think about becoming financially free and leaving your business on your terms. It's easy to get. You just go to www.sustainablebusiness.co forward slash financial freedom, all one word. That's www sustainablebusiness.co forward slash financial freedom. You'll be taken to a page. You can learn more about it. And if you want to talk to me, you can do so. Or if you want to sign up, you can do that too. So this is Josh Patrick. We're with Neil Livingstone. You're at Cracking the Cashflow Code. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope to see you back here really soon.